I know a lot of people probably wonder if there's a perfect time during the year to actually travel or if there's the best time to save money, especially if you're traveling with a family or a group. Now, a lot of times people don't really pay attention to the prices. They don't pay attention to the availability. What they do is pay attention to the cycles and those cycles usually run on highs and lows. And this is what people actually go for. But I'm here to tell you there is a low season. There is a high season. There's a time when you can save money and there's a time when you're going to spend a lot more than you need to and we're going to talk about that today. What's up, everyone? Eric Allen back with you again, founder of Planiversity, Plan of Audio podcast, and of course, the Planiverse Travel Magazine, which uh, we are expanding on. We're expanding on everything. I mean, there is only one way to put it when we talk about Planiversity, and it's constant expansion. From where we started, we are here. Now we're here. The next year, we're going to be here off the screen. So I want to talk to you about some things, and I want to talk to you about this one story that I've got for you about my most recent trip to Europe. Um, now, this doesn't happen very often. It has happened in the past, especially during COVID season, especially on the backside of COVID season. That was the last time I'd actually seen anything this rare. But on my way over there now, I'm going to preface this by saying that I'm actually very specific about where I choose my seat. I try to get the same spot Every time I know where I want to sleep, I know how I want to rest, I know where my best options are, I know when I want to actually be able to access my bag and my books and my things to be able to work if I can't sleep. I know when I don't want to climb over people to use the bathroom. I know when I'm going to have the best option, when I'm going to have the best leg room. I'm very, very specific about my seat and there's no way I am telling you which seat that I go for. But I will tell you that on this last trip going over to Europe, on the way there and the way back, if you can believe that, the row that I was sitting in, which was four people wide, was absolutely empty. Absolutely empty. Now, one thing that people know about me is when I travel, I travel with a pillow. That might seem ridiculous, but if there's one thing you want, it's to be able to sleep when it's necessary to do so. Now, I could probably attribute that to being in the military for 20 years, but that is something that's very important to me is to be able to be comfortable enough to sleep and to be able to get a few hours of shut eye when I have that chance to actually do so. So I usually travel with my pillow. Of course, I slap a fresh pillowcase on there as soon as I head out the door. And then when I'm on the plane, if I'm not using that thing to actually snuggle up against a wall or something like that, then I'm usually using it behind my back as some kind of lumbar support. Because as everybody knows, unless you're flying first class, your seats are not going to be that comfortable. And there's not a whole lot of lumbar support or lower back support to keep you comfortable for an eight hour, 10 hour, 12 hour flight. So it's very important to have something tucked behind you. In any case, I had my pillow. So what does that mean? Now I've got four seats wide. I can lift the handles. I can move the seat belts. I can lay my pillow down. And yes, you're right. I took a nap, a nice nap on the way there and on the way back. Because why not? You know, the great thing is I don't fly first class because first class is so expensive. Now, that doesn't mean that other people shouldn't do it. If you got the money and you feel like spending it, by all means, even if you don't have the money, sometimes people just fork up the money just to be able to fly first class. And it's absolutely fine. It's comfortable. And one of the logics that I can put behind it, especially for red eye flights, which means a flight that travels overnight, one of the logics that I can actually tie or attach to wanting to fly first class is the logic of being well rested when you arrive at your destination. So if I'm flying from, you know, New York to Paris and I know that's a red hour or red eye flight, I might be flying for eight hours. 
and I want to get some sleep because I don't arrive till six in the morning or seven in the morning. And now I've got a whole day ahead of me. I'm either going to be tired during that day, which I usually am because I don't sleep all that great on planes or I'm going to be well rested. And a lot of times I think that's why especially business people will go for the first class is because they have that option to lay down to sleep, to sleep comfortably and be well rested when they arrive at their destination to attend whatever they're doing, seminars, business meetings, you name it, they're rested for it. Um, so when I actually have the opportunity to be in a coach, um, I will say I go for the, the premium economy, of course, um, because it does have a little bit of extra leg room. And if you fly enough, that's just one of the little perks that you get with American Airlines. But if you have that that premium economy and you're in the coach compartment and you actually have the ability to lay across seats oh my god it's better than business class because one thing about business class is even though it is a step up from coach business class there's no removing armrest there is that solid bulky armrest in between and yeah the seats are a little bit wider you got more leg room you could probably recline a little bit more than usual not as much as first class but you can recline a little bit at least more so than coach, and you can get a little bit of rest, but you will never, ever, ever in business class have the option to lift armrests and lay across multiple seats like you can in coach. So a lot of times coaches, it's affordable and it's also running a gamble because believe me, as much as I fly, I've also been on those flights where I'm sitting next to a ridiculously oversized person who's overflowing from their seat into my seat, making me very uncomfortable. And again, I don't usually sit on the inside. I don't like the inside. Um, I don't even like choosing the window anymore. So if I am in one position, I don't want to be that person that's always climbing over somebody else. And it's even worse when somebody next to you is very, uh, what's the politically correct way to say this, is very cumbersome about getting out of their seat and moving out. And especially if that person has to use the bathroom multiple times throughout the flight, then it's just kind of a pain, you know, especially if you're trying to sleep. In any case... It was a great opportunity that I had, but why did I have that? Why did I have the opportunity to actually lay across four seats, not just going one way, but going there and back? It was awesome. And the reason why is because I was traveling during a low season. Now, it was January, so you know I don't know what most people think about January, but January is actually considered one of the lower seasons. So if you're traveling from through the fall you know especially in the united states a lot of times you have to really base it on where you're traveling so if i'm traveling from the united states to europe in the fall it's probably not going to be that expensive if i'm traveling in the united states from new york to orlando probably going to be a little bit more expensive those intercontinental flights around the united states are going to be a little bit more expensive because we have thanksgiving we have christmas and of course following christmas is new year's but that's celebrated around the world um, christmas obviously is not celebrated everywhere around the world so in the western countries it's obviously a bit more predominant um, thanksgiving is an american holiday so there's a lot of traveling there i will give you this a lot of it is probably road travel or travel by car versus flying but you're still going to see an uptick in travel trends around november and december time frame and then it's going to trickle right back off again you know, and I don't really know what the cause of that is. It's probably because people are just returning to work after having the holiday. They feel refreshed. It could be that people just spend a lot of money on Christmas and they're trying to let their bank accounts build back up. There could be a number of reasons why you actually see that cycle just drop. But the way it usually works is, you know, the end of August going into September, October, you're going to see that trend start sinking down, right? And then in the United States, especially once you get to that November, December time frame you'll see it start to pitch up a little bit as people are traveling to see family and friends for the holidays and then as soon as January hits that cycle goes right back down and it calms down for a little while until you start getting around the March time frame which is going to be the spring break time frame a lot of college students are traveling people are just going out there for their first trip of the year you know they're finally ready the weather's starting to perk up a little bit in the northern states and the Midwest and people are just about ready for that vacation, that first vacation of the year. So you'll see around the springtime, around Easter, that travel starts to pitch up. And one of the things that you can see 
and this isn't based on what I'm actually telling you, this is based on statistics and trends, is start looking at the cost of plane tickets. Now, there is an ideal time frame of when you wanna purchase a plane ticket, and that's been speculative throughout a few years, but one of the things that you'll typically hear is that two to three months out. That for me is the sweet spot. If I want a ticket, I'm usually booking my ticket about 60 days out. So they usually say around 75 days, but two to three months out is going to lock you into a pretty sweet spot when it comes to ticket prices. Unless you're talking about traveling during the highest season, which is gonna be in the summer months. You know, We're talking about when students are off of school, when parents can finally travel with their children, when people decide to finally take that summer break and go on vacation, the months of June, July, and August are insane, especially the last two years. Now that the COVID numbers are dropping back down, travel is actually starting to pick back up. And once travel is picking back up, you'll see in those high seasons, ticket prices are seemingly much higher than they were back in 2018, 2019, at least pre-COVID or pre-pandemic time frame. All right. I remember I used to travel in the high months to Germany for somewhere around eight or nine hundred dollars now it costs me anywhere up to fifteen hundred dollars for that same ticket all right and the trends as they're saying as experts are analyzing the travel data over the last couple of years and looking at what people are doing they are saying that travel trends are going to continue upward regardless of inflation numbers so it's kind of an amazing thing. It's the the impact of the pandemic, what it actually did to travel trends is an amazing thing. People don't care anymore, you know? I think that little bit of time of being trapped, of being bottled up, of being put in your house and put, you know, under restriction and you got to travel. And if you're going to travel with a mask, if you got to travel with a mask, you got to travel with, you know, your COVID paperwork, um, meaning you, you have your vaccine documents. If you don't have that, then you have to have tests. And if you don't have a test, you have to go get a test and it's got to be within a certain amount of time. It, it was just insane, you know, and I think it probably pushed people to a point where they were like, I can't stand this. I want my freedom back. And I love the way that things ended up because as it turns out, what the governments did was they say, hey, we're going to leave this in the hands of the people. Let them decide. If you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. If you don't want to wear a mask, don't wear a mask. And you can see what the majority of people said was, I don't want a mask. I'm going to risk it. I'm going to roll the dice. If I get sick, I get sick. Obviously, people are not overflowing in uh, hospital rooms. ERs aren't overwhelmed anymore. Things have changed. It's not as bad as we thought it was going to be. People want their freedom back. And even though inflation seems to be rising and the prices on everything are increasing, you know, notably fuel prices over the last few years, food prices over the last few years, they're absolutely insane. Normal, normal, like average commodities that we depend on, the prices have gone up pretty significantly. Even in 2021, I remember, and I just bought tonight a can of crushed tomatoes. It was like 89 cents in 2021, and now it's $1.49. It's insane. It's almost doubled in that time. So everybody's seeing it. Everybody's feeling it. And regardless of feeling that, people are still forking up the money to travel. So what I can tell you is if you plan on traveling, if you plan on getting out there and you have the availability to do so, or you have the flexibility to do so, sorry, sip of coffee. If you have the availability to do so, travel during the low seasons. All right. And if you can't figure out what the low seasons are, it's not a problem. Just jump on Google. There's plenty of opportunity. I even did a simple Google search tonight. And this is one of the things that I came up with. You can see here on this uh, Thrillist.com, they actually highlight this map that was produced by LastMinute.com, which is a British travel site. And it shows the cycles per month. Now, you can see here on the left, it says low seasons represented by this turquoise color, followed by the mid range season which will be in yellow and then the high travel seasons which you could just see there as the entire map was red was in August so obviously low seasons right here it's showing December January February all pretty low once you get into the summer months it's ridiculously high across much of the world 
this wasn't difficult information to find you can easily 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 just do a google search and you'll find the same information you can look up trends you could look up you know what are the high seasons for traveling when are ticket prices the highest and that information will be provided to you it's not like we live in a time where you have to get into the books and do all the research yourself you have to do about a minute of research and many 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 pieces of information will come your way hell if you have chat gpt if you've been playing around with that get on chat gpt ask them when is the cheapest season to fly when is the most expensive season to fly it will spit you out a report that would blow your mind and if you wanted to be more specific you could say could you be more specific when are airplanes most overflowing you know when are flights you know most commonly canceled throughout the year it'll actually provide you that information based on statistical data reported up until the year 2021 it's amazing it's only going to get better it's only going to get more informative so what i'm telling you is the information's out there and if you have the opportunity to travel during a low season travel during the low season you're going to save money and you might even have the opportunity to lay across four seats and get some sleep while you're traveling that's a hell of a lot better than trying to sleep sitting up all right well i hope this helps you again the information's all out out there all you have to do is type in a few words into google don't be so impatient that you're not willing to wait on a little bit of information to come your way it's out there it's available it's not secret if you're the type of person who can save money and you're looking to invest your time and your money into the most affordable opportunity when it comes to travel look at that data pay attention to when the cycles are down when the cycles are down that's when you strike when people are traveling throughout christmas and when they're traveling during the high season in the summer that's when you could be laying back or traveling locally by car you know you have options it's all up to you to do the research i hope this helps if you have any questions reach out to us at plants at thank you for listening safe travels